Hi, I'm Michael Ingui from Max Ingui Architects, and I am here with Andrew Fishman from SMR Craftworks. So we're at a really fun passive house project that we're doing in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, that is a true historic masonry retrofit, meaning we are not gutting this house. We kept the existing stairs, we kept the existing pine floors, we kept the existing crown. It's also open on three sides, which means it doesn't have a party wall on both sides. So it's a pretty complex passive house and it's a lot of fun. It's been a great client. Uh, one of our principals, Will Connor, is running this job. And kind of as much fun for me is this is also Andrew's first passive house. Uh, we've known him forever as a fantastic contractor who does really great woodwork, good finish work. You know, once you start to know who you like, you kind of wonder, well, do I have to find someone who has done passive? And the answer is no. So I would love to hear more from you about how the process was. How did you hear about passive house? How, how, how did this go? Right. And um, really, anything you'd also recommend to anybody going at it for the first time? Sure. Well, I mean, I, the first time I heard about passive house was from you. Mm -hmm. And you said there's this thing called passive house. And I thought, well, Michael's gone off the deep end, and this will probably be the last time I work with him. But, <laughs> but fortunately, uh, you kept promoting it, and you kept talking about how eh, it's really cool, and I kept hearing little things here and there, and um, got invited to a few of the open houses to see what was happening, that you, those open houses you created, which were great, and ultimately uh, wound up taking the Craftsman course, and just sat around and started bidding on them waiting for the right one to cross our path. And when, I mean, for me, when I saw this house, I was like, please let this be the one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got lucky and uh, it was a good fit between us and the client. And it's been a great experience. I mean, it's just, it's so much fun to, you know, after being in the business for 30 years, to be learning new stuff for me is as good as it gets. Uh, it's funny that you just put it that way. So, um, I mean, this is one of our larger passive houses that we're doing. Definitely one of our more technically difficult because we're keeping so much existing um, uh, items. And you looked at it and said, wow, well, let this be my first one. Right. So, yeah. tell me more about that. Why, how, well, how do you feel that way? Well, I, I, I just didn't, it didn't seem overwhelming. And maybe because I've never done it before. I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. <laughs> So, um, and, and it wasn't overwhelming. The whole process has been great. It was not overwhelming. It was a constant learning experience. You know, uh, the hardest part, obviously, on your first one is making sure you're making money. You know, that's, uh, we all are in that business to earn a living. Um, and we took a couple of hits here and there, but for the most part, we educated ourselves before we put our bid in, and we had a pretty good idea of what we were facing. Um, but, you know, on my side, I was learning stuff along the way. So for me, the cost of doing things a certain way, often I saw as educational costs, as opposed to costs of what we were doing to the home and pulling profit out of the home. I saw it as educating myself, all my craftsmen, all the people that work for me, the project managers, they were learning as well. So we, this served for us as, you know, on-site education hands-on for all of us, and mm -hmm. that's invaluable. It makes that's, a lot of sense, yeah. it really does. Tell me more about the contractor education and the course you took, tell me a little bit more about that. Um, we took a course with Kevin Brennan, the, one of the great instructors of our time. <laughs> it would be, it would be the Babe Ruth of Passive House instructors one day. <laughs> and uh, it was great, I mean, it was, he was super and he, he laid it out, and honestly, it was, exactly as he explained it, you know, mm -hmm. it was that thorough, down to how to fold the tape, mm -hmm. you know, how to prep things, and his experiences, he brought his experiences to the course, and, and I'm still learning from Kevin, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he's, a, he's a great source of, of technical expertise, as they say. From brick out, if you imagine, all of this is gone, so down to the brick, and basically trying to get the windows the right size for our existing brick openings. From there, pulling everything together uh, and tying floor below to our plaster trim molding, this huge molding which we left in place. 
And when we demoed the wall, we wound up putting uh, some two by fours under the under each about three foot section to support it, locked it in at the bottom, demoed the ceiling, locked it in at the top, so it never moved. And um, we reinforced it with some structural screws, plastered over them. But the nice thing about the plaster is when we came in with our air barrier, it basically came up. We taped to the bottom of the plaster. At the top of the plaster, we put plywood, taped to our plywood. From the, we opened the floor above and taped to the plywood and then back up to our air barrier. So the only thing that remained was the plaster molding and the few supports we had in place for it. Um, those supports we sized just big enough so we could also use them as framing for our sheetrock. So our sheetrock then just went right over that support. That support was designed to stay in place. So it worked out really well. And then obviously we have air barrier and all, all new sheetrock, all new framing coming off the wall, all dense pack insulation, being that these are exterior exposed walls. Um, that was it, replicated all our moldings and trimmed. Had everything milled up to exactly what it looked like around the windows since our sizes have changed so much. And we lowered our sills on these two front windows as well, so we got a little bigger. What can you recommend to others who are kind of following along? Well, um, I think the biggest thing is to be patient, you know, and to make sure you find out all the detailed information because you have existing joists that you have to wrap, you have to clean them, you have to uh, prime them. You have to you know, make sure they're well in their pockets and you have to wrap each one individually. And you've just got to follow the basic rules you learn as a passive trash. You know, it's really uh, following some of these basic points and utilizing great advice and also you know, your errors and your previous experiences all added up to my game. <laughs> so true. So right. true. So, uh, and then having uh, had John Mitchell and Ed yeah. Hamm worked in Building Titan there at the Golf Park. Yeah. John, Mitchell, John Mitchell, we took on, because it was our first, we took on John as our own consultant as well. Mm -hmm. Because we felt, being that it's our first one, we wanted to have an in-house person here on call anytime we had any questions Smart. with materials, with technique making sure everything went right the whole way. And that was very, that was invaluable to this yeah. person. Bringing your pass files, and you do it for structural all the time, but uh, bringing a pass files consultant in on the contractor level and having him be almost your representative, your, your eyes and ears, and, and your mentor as you go through it, kind of a, it's a smart, it's a really smart way to do your first one. Yeah, and it worked out really well, and he was great. I mean, every time we came up with uh, a question, he had an answer, we had him in here, in the beginning, I want to say he was in here maybe once a week. He's always on call, FaceTime, easy to get in touch with, you know, and, and it's easy. You're in the middle of something, you're not sure if you're doing it right, and just call John, call the consultant on FaceTime, show him the detail, and he'll say, okay, we're good there, we're not good there, and you can move on knowing that you're sealing everything properly. Because you really only get one time, one chance to do it. Once the sheetrock goes off, you're in. So we kept the existing stair, and as you can see, it's in great condition. We actually wound up raising the height of the balusters because we felt the handrail was a little low for the enlarged opening we created. Plus we made it up to code. On the right side of the stair, it's a full plaster wall, and that's a great air barrier, and we were able to retain that. As well as up top, we relocated some of the existing crown molding to better serve the purpose of the layout and that again the crown serving as an air barrier in the wall is actually plaster with molding applied to it which we were fortunate to find out that also created a full air barrier down to the stringer on the right side of the stair and the way we air sealed it is we came from underneath the stair and we exposed everything underneath and we provided uh, tapes and caulks and intello vapor barriers on the existing brick basically to the underside of that stringer and up until the underside of the stair track and that allowed us to achieve a great air barrier along this wall. So one of the exciting things that we also did with this house was we opened up 
the stairwell, which used to travel here. And we brought this one out to this level, about three feet more. You can't see it because we've got the protection in place, but three feet more here goes right up to a skylight, which really pours light into the center of the house. Um, getting light into the center of these homes is really important. But we were able to keep the main part of the stair, and then the stair person was able to kind of recreate just the bend and that straight, just, just, just to basically lengthen it. We kept with the same trimmers, and we just moved, we would just move the header. So one last question as we lose our light, because we've got this incredible sunset behind us, you can kind of see the Statue of Liberty. Um, anything you would do differently, any advice you could give anybody? I mean, I always feel like people watch these videos and they're like, okay, great, so what's in it for me? Right. What, what can I get? What can I get out of this? Anything that you'd recommend? Um, do your homework, you know, watch videos of, there's so much stuff online that I, as we were going through things, mm -hmm. I would just watch, you know, YouTube videos of people doing, doing this stuff and you, you get hooked on it, you know, and that was valuable as we were in it. I would have loved to have spent the time doing a lot of that before mm -hmm. and just educating myself even more. You know, the course is, the certification course is great, but you can't just do that. You mm -hmm. gotta, you gotta, you know watch some stuff, read some literature. There's a lot of stuff out there now on passive houses and how to do the details. And that would really be helpful. As a contractor, what would, what could our office have done better? But also what, what do architects really have to get right? Even if we got it right, but we don't, right. what, what, what do architects really have to work on to get it right to make it easier for and so for, for a contractor to really be successful? Sure, I, I, I understand. So the, just like a set of drawings, Right, or just from, from an architect, which gives us a layout, from a structural engineer, gives us a structural layout, mm -hmm. mechanical, all that. There needs to be detailed drawings from the passive side. Mm -hmm. Very tricky to do, because a lot of this you don't know until you get to it. Mm -hmm. And what was great about your drawing set is you did provide some great boilerplate, you know, this is how we generally do it. And the idea was always, well, this is how we generally do it, but this detail's a little different, so let's just change this to that. Mm -hmm. Providing all those drawings as a roadmap was extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think um, any architect who's getting into their first passive house definitely has to provide in that drawing set passive details. Mm -hmm. And it's gotta be clear. And, and I think to a contractor, you, if, if, especially if they've never done it before, you've gotta really stress, you know, these details are yes. critical. These are different. Right. This yeah. is not this yeah. is not like, you know, okay, we can put a molding here or move it over two inches. It and, doesn't and matter. You, and you can't bury your passive details no, in your drawing no, There's no cheating on that. Yeah, so, so no. these are different sheets. They say yeah. passive out details. Because yes. those are the details because a lot of contractors have never they've never seen those before. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's, so, that's good yeah. to know. Cool.